now we turn over to the uh, second part of our session called Special Opinion. And I'd like to give a, a foreword here. Peter Kanchelovsky Foundation, two months prior to this forum, initiated uh, master classes for students of art schools, for young art lovers, for those who are interested in art criticism. We organized a whole series of master classes in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. In St. Petersburg, uh, they were organized in the new museum gallery venue. It's an initiative by Aslan Chekhov. And in Moscow, this whole series of master classes was organized based on some educational experience that for the last two years was successfully implemented by the Center of Modern Art Garage. And now, for our next presentation, I'd like to invite here to the stage the uh, head of the educational programs of the Center of Modern Arts Garage, Anastasia Mitushina. Hi, I will check this device here and I will turn on my uh, timer so that I don't take any more time. The only uh, situation is that we had to have a presentation on the screen. Can you turn it on, please? Good uh, afternoon, dear friends. I hope that my presentation would be positive and uh, would uh, try to answer questions of Mr. Bartolik, uh, how we can invite and involve young generation to art criticism. And as you can see, this presentation contains two names, Anastasia Mitushina and uh, Marta Andreeva. We have divided this presentation between us, and I'll tell you why we have decided to do so. Starting from May to March 2011, in our garage modern art center, we initiated Art Text Studio School of Art Journalism. And I'll tell you why we were interested in this project. And Mark Agayev, who was uh, a teacher in this school, will explain more about um, those training courses and the educational experience. What I was talking about here is an experiment. We're a young institution. And me, myself, starting from September 2010, I've been uh, heading this department. That's why we're open to new ways, new suggestions. And Art Tech Studio was an experiment, in a sense. That's why we would not dwell upon a theory or certain effects. We are just inviting you to uh, have a glance at the project together with us to try to uh, scrutinize it. And if you have any questions, we will be glad to answer them at the end of the presentation. Some history. Uh, this Center for Contemporary Culture Garage is a non-for-profit organization which mainly organizes exhibitions. We are actively working already starting from 2009 and in the beginning of 2000. Uh, sorry, we've been active since 2008 and starting from uh, 2009. We also gave commentaries to different exhibitions, meaning we organized master classes and lectures d uh, that uh, touched upon the exhibitions we uh, held in our uh, center. Uh, starting from 2010, we've expanded onto a separate department, and now we organize five, six events a week. Uh, both for adults and for children. And all the events that we uh, made, uh, they uh, started to cover more general topics, not just uh, specific exhibitions. We tried to tell about modern heroes of arts and about the art in general. Uh, in this way, we happened to sit on two chairs. On the uh, one chair, uh, we create a product for art criticism, so we organize exhibition. And it's not my task to explain you about it. It will be the critics themselves who will do it. They will tell you how are we doing it, good or bad. And in the second chair, there we are art critics ourselves. And what do I mean by this? By art, critic, uh, I, by art criticism, I, not, I do not mean uh, some... Um, historical 
uh, thing that uh, proposed any subjective opinions, but I, by art criticism, I mean a commentary, a live commentary. Boris Groys, in his Critical Reflections article, uh, explained it, and since, and notwithstanding the fact that this article belongs to 1997, it's still relevant until now. He used to tell us that a, uh, an art critic, giving those commentaries, he gives a certain clothes to an artist, like a protection barrier for an artist. Why do we need that? Because we work in a modern and a contemporary art environment, and uh, very often when you organize meetings with artists, when you invite art historians to an audience, to a room, when you give an opportunity to them to speak to the artists, we try to damp some negative reaction already in the beginning, and we create an environment for fruitful communication, conversation. Today, you know that uh, you can always answer any comments that you are given, even by an internet. Uh, still, very often people uh, approach me and uh, tell me not some things that are related to lectures, but about uh, their own opinions about garage itself. So, and we've decided that if a lecture is uh, an event that allows us to give back some comments, some feedback, why wouldn't we want to involve people in a more direct dialogue? And today you see that sometimes if you have uh, your own opinion, you're not always bringing it for an open discussion. And uh, already in September 2010, we've launched a whole series of master classes of a more practical character, applied character, and those master classes were called Secrets and Experience. Uh, all in all, it was 14 master classes, and amongst participants of this far, uh, master classes were people sitting in this uh, room today, uh, Mr. Diakov, uh, Ms. Penteleva, and uh, at all those master classes, we would uh, uh, particularly discuss a specific genre, an essay, a critical article, and so on and so forth. And this process involved a very active feedback from uh, the people. I also was responsible for checking homework. And at the end of each master class, a lecturer would give uh, homework, and all students and other participants, they would write their own essays. So you understand, the master class was 14, there were also three practical activities, and on them, in average, there were 70 people. На занятия. Как раз про то, насколько людям интересно писать. Из этих 70, вот этой средней такой пропорции, было 7 студентов отделе... исторического факультета отделения истории искусства, моего родного факультета. Where we agreed that our master classes were included into the additional curriculum, and the students uh, could take a test. And it was very difficult to make people do the home task. But nevertheless, there was a group of about 13 to 15 people who did the home task and demanded an active response to their text. When we discussed their text uh, in kind of formalistically, they would insist that they want to know what they th what we really thought about those texts. After those. Master classes, uh, we found that the people are excited in forming their own opinion. They are excited in uh, finding how uh, art criticism is written. Then we started another product project that Marta will talk about. We, it is an experiment. Uh, so, Marta Geva, Arctic Studio, will tell more about it. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for my for your attention. I hope the technology works, because we prepared not only slides but a video too. Yeah, excellent. Everything works. Art Tech Studio. What is that? What is the essence of that experiment, and who are the students who will represent the future art critics of Russia and probably the world? You see, our students 
our first students. Who are they? They are. There's, there's 13 students. There was a competition, and we selected the candidates. Each of the candidates was to uh, send in a review of one of the exhibitions they visited, so we knew whom we enrolled. There was no limitations about the length of that paper, and but they, we wanted to see how they write, what they write, and what they think. So there was that devil's dozen, uh, the ages 18 to 23. 90% of them are students from uh, the Faculty of Journalism and uh, Art History. The people who knew which profession they were studying, they speak uh, two and more languages. So those are people with some, uh, actually, They had never been published in the medium. They are very ambitious. They want to be in Art Chronicle. To, they want to write for a major magazine. They have burning eyes. They travel a lot. They've been to many things, to New York. They know every door of every gallery. There was a question at the first class uh, about a person they would like to interview, and quite a lot of people wanted to interview Olga Sviblova. <coughs> so they have their own idols. Yes, they said we wanted to talk to her as a professional in this world. And they wrote questions. And actually, one of my students already interviewed her. They like Rotko. They enjoy Rotko very much. So this was typical for practically everyone. How the classes were structured, we had 40 hours. And every Wednesday, we had a theory for one hour, which was a purely theoretical knowledge about how this or that type of text is written, whether that's an interview, whether that's news, whether that's uh, journalist investigation, so the laws of the genre, how you should write. 60 minutes was spent on that. Then we practiced. We practiced that genre. If that was an interview, we invited an artist. Or they did that at home if it needed something like an art review that needs a more time to think. So then we discussed the texts, we found the mistakes, they defended, they were defended each text from each other. And the last part was uh, games, the creative games and games that were also teaching them public behavior, which is also very important for a journalist. Uh, I have a special slide on that, the games we played. One of the tasks, well, there were over 50 games, and that allowed the students to feel easier. And one of our achievements was that people started communicating between each other. First, they came, they were very reserved initially, but then they started communicating. Now that's a very close-knit bunch of people who go places together and uh, that who share information through social networks, and that's all thanks to the game. So we created a friendly environment where people would enjoy communicating. And one of the games was which writer would you write a letter, which artist would you write a letter to? They had to write a letter to their favorite artist, be that Van Gogh or a living artist. They, the very idea of doing that was something they enjoyed very much. The classes 
were actually models of an editorial board. We gave them complete freedom. We said, friends, you can do whatever you like. We are giving you the life journal of which previously only published uh, that uh, things like uh, we open f 7 o'clock tomorrow and we close at 7 p.m. So we um, had our own Art Tech Studio blog. We allowed everything. They could publish uh, reviews, reports. Uh, they could invent their own columns. And they felt that they were part of the team, that they were writing and they were read because it was a special pleasure for them to have a link to the Facebook and tell their friends and uh, neighbors that they had r just written something. Uh, we uh, published announcements. <coughs> As different from many publications which just announce uh, the exhibitions in Moscow, we made a focus. We made a focus on, say, seven male exhibitions or the exhibitions that men would like. Every week uh, that, uh, that uh, was uh, a column that, um, say, one week they fo focused on exhibitions for killjoys and so on and so forth. So uh, we uh, had the back count uh, 14 days before the exhibition NY Minute. Every day we published a quotation and information about an artist. And thus uh, we attracted uh, the bloggers and the readers of blogs to that. And at the same time, uh, the guys streamlined their art without even seeing the artist. Uh, another thing was the art map, 850 steps to garage. They drew the map themselves, what could be seen on the way to garage from the metro, and we saw what was of interest to them. Naturally, they wrote reviews, reports, and they interviewed people thanks to our friends and thanks to the museums who invited them and said, yes, you can interview our curators and artists. So uh, they m liked interactive activities like Facebook and games more. So there was nothing fundamental about it. Uh, we didn't say that you cannot write big texts, but they preferred a smaller format. Uh, this is the blog that we had. It's still on. This was the official blog of Art Tech Studio. And we had all the announcements, texts, and interviews that I am telling you about. But for them, it was something significant. It was a kind of publication for them. Out of practice, there's another event, uh, the talking waiting lines. This is nothing new in journalism. They w went to see the waiting lines to Moscow museums and listen to what the people in those lines would talk about. Uh, then uh, the video surveys, we split them into small groups. One person was the editor, another uh, person was the operator, and they sh shot small videos. I apologize to our foreign guests. It is completely in Russian, and it's uh, all about different uh, Moscow institutions like Vinzavod Garage and Strelka, and what the Moscovites and guests of the capital think of those three museums. And we will see what uh, they ask about those three places. On a bright April day, students uh, shopped the s demanded that the uh, pass buyers answer them three very simple, idiotic questions. What do they do at Vinzavod? 
wine plant. It's an exhibition place. They work. They make wine. Wine. The major cultural center of Moscow. One of the respondents asked not to show his face. We shot. I was an actor in an Indian film. What is garage? A place where they repair cars. They would live there for days long, 24 hours. I would really spend 24 hours a day there. Well, someone uses it as an eating place. Installation place. It's an exhibition room. Where is the Strelka? In Kazan. I know where it is in St. Petersburg. I don't know where it is in Moscow. I don't know. I can't tell you. Probably at an exhibition. in Basel Island, in St. Petersburg. So they drink the end. The idiotic questions were asked by Anastasia Sukharoslova, Maria Zhikhareva, and Yevgeny Vikharev. We had four videos like that of different kinds. We understood that the voice of the people got it absolutely wrong. And it was interesting for them to do it. They did not try to analyze an exhibition, but a kind of a game was interesting for them to find what people know and think about modern art. And throughout those 40 hours, that was the tendency. The art life after garage. So what do we do next? What did we, what happened to those students? We provided them with anonymous questionnaires. They did not write their names where they could criticize, write what they liked. So there were not only very flattering responses, but here we can see that everything was wonderful a great creative atmosphere, very dynamic, uh, a group in Facebook meeting outside of the lecture room, inspiration. That was one of our main ideas that was in the texts. We did not try to teach them to write in this or that manner. We just tried to make them love their profession, respect their profession, and inspire them to do something. That they could write, they could talk about art and work, employment. We did not think much about it initially, but it just happened. All of our colleagues, and I've spent seven years with ITAR TAS, and many of my colleagues learned about that studio, and they asked, me to recommend a good student who could uh, 
come for internship or even for practice. So uh, many of the um, students uh, got uh, their jobs uh, they are open in open space and in other magazines. The editor of, of one of the magazines is here. So for us, it was also a very good way out. They never expected, well, we, no, no one guaranteed them employment, but yes, but proposals uh, for vacancies came, and I put them on the Facebook, and the, the, we have the feedback. Now about the future. I'm completing with my lecture the future of the Art Tech Studio. The opinion of the students about what they want from those courses. More games they like to play. Uh, in To invite known art critics, master classes in performance art, employment, more classes, and I want to be published in prestigious magazines. Uh, we are open to experiments. We want to start uh, the next studio next fall. We have a lot of colleagues in the room and probably have some ideas about how that course may be changed, what could be added, and that would be great because you see the consumers of those courses, you see what they want. We decided that we need a fundamental basis, understanding, speech lessons, because many people found it difficult to speak even to each other. Uh, we should repeal of the age limitations. When we announced the courses, 70% of the applicants were women aged from 30 to 45 who said that would be future art critics. They came to an interview, and when we said with, we're only working with students, that is... But th these women are still a huge resource. And uh, setting up the school council with kids from 15 to 25, teenagers, we don't want to let them go. We've spent a lot of time with those guys, and it would be very interesting to listen to them when we create exhibitions, their advice on how to write, uh, write about those exhibitions. Uh, they could write press releases, so that would be an organization that could be appended to the garage and provide the feedback for us. I think that would be interesting, and that my last slide and this, with this slide, I expect your questions. Thank you for your attention. Marta Anastasia, we thank you so much. And I'm trying to see, are there any hands in the audience? Dimitri, please. You are being brought to the mic. My practical suggestion, this school has to be closed. And everyone who spent at least one hour in the school has to be uh, brought away from the profession. This school is closed today, Vadim. As far as I understand your presentation, content is nothing. Communication is everything. You see, we're living in a country when in 19th century art criticism and criticism as such uh, strived and became and was at its best, so its climax in this century. Because the sense of criticism is how to assess, how to appraise an, uh, a work of art, how to separate the good work of art from the bad work of art. As far as I understand, you are teaching people to do an absolutely different thing. What you have shown, it's a catastrophe. It's a real catastrophe. Uh, Dmitri, can I answer to that? May I answer while sitting? I, th I don't think there is a catastrophe. We have an a, a set of applied knowledge giving references to uh, knowledge sources, and we never limited people in knowledge. We always repeated that and reiterated that to become an art critic, you have to have an art historian background. 
and you have to have a normal education. And I'm repeating that we are not a university, we are a school, we are an experiment. It's better to give people some means of communication. We have never told you that we are teaching them art critics. We just gave them the rules of the game. We told them what is Russian language as such, and also communication, co uh, conversation. It was uh, an important element of our uh, master classes. And we also gave them an opportunity to find themselves and to realize themselves in, a, in an environment of art. Again, we are not an academic um, educational establishment. Me, myself, I also graduated from an, uh, an art school, and I know that to become an art critic, you have to have your high education, higher education. Well, if people communicate on Facebook, and if you think that art criticism is born on Facebook, then you have achieved what you wanted to achieve. You see, people have said that during this course, they wanted to listen to the history of art course. This is the first and the foremost thing that they ask us about. Well, the main problem is that those guys, they will be successful, and those guys, they will be the cream of the crop of our art criticism. I'm sure about this. And Dmitry Gutev has passed over the mic. It means that he has stopped the discussion, but I would like to raise it up again. Uh, by asking you the question. Please raise your hands, those who believe that this is a catastrophe, those of you who support Mr. Gutov. Hi, my name is Ksenia Landa, and I'm an editor-in-chief of a St. Petersburg magazine. I believe that the main problem is the problem of the lack of knowledge, especially and ignorance, especially in the uh, world of the modern arts. I myself, I respect the garage and those projects that they organize and conduct, but in this case in particular, it's a catastrophe. You... Uh, m make us understand that you are educating people in art criticism or in art uh, and um, in the history of art, but you are not doing it. It's just a fleeting image that these people get uh, during this training process that uh, they are uh, already professionals, and this is very bad. You shouldn't give them that image. What kind, of what kind of impression people get after our courses? We are not responsible for this. It's not the thing that we have to be responsible for. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a professor. We make a program. Dmitry, can you please uh, uh, give us an opportunity to speak? Nastya, who are you? Are you an organizer? Are you a teacher? You are being presented as an organizer. The organizers cannot be responsible for the results? That's what you mean. No, what I told you is that I'm not responsible for those impressions that our students get. You mean the impressions that I get? No, let me uh, finish my thoughts. When I say that I'm organizing courses, it's like uh, you, what you tell us is that if a person goes through our training and gets an impression that he's a professional, well, this is wrong. We are making a studio that helps you to learn how to write. We give you skills, writing skills, which allow you to continue your education so that you can get to know who is Ivan Kunin, who is Benoit, so that this person continues his own education. This is his own choice. I cannot force a person to make a choice. I have made my choice. I read those uh, um, people. I'm not an art critic myself, though I have written a number of publications and um, uh, articles in the magazine. Um, if a person gets an impression that after 40 hours of training, after which you don't get any certificates of that, gets an impression that he is an architect, it's bad. It's just a, uh, a form of communication. It's just a, um, an interactive way of uh, training. We are not a university. We are creating a platform so that people who come to exhibitions do not leave with negative feelings that they have uh, read some text of a critic and they're not being communicated with. Today, the art cannot speak of itself. A museum is not um, a temple. Though, of course, we would want to live in the 19th century. It's not a 19th century. And want it or not, young people would write. They would express their feelings about uh, certain paintings. That's what they write in Facebook. Some of those young people can go through certain 
practical things, like they can uh, start working as journalists and they can continue their career as journalists. Be very careful and mind the words I'm using. Sometimes when people come to us, they cannot formulate why they do it. They demand their particular request and requirement for that. But I'm completely responsible for whatever I do, and I know that there is a certain ethics in our profession, and I know that wonderful art critics whom I respect, they have earned this right to be art critics, they have good education, and they have uh, writing skills. That is why do not you know, translate our words in a different way. None of our students have a perception or an impression that they have got a complete art critics education and then they would be demanded on the market a, a boy who works in an open space of uh, professional media he is now uh, involved in the education process in the Mo M Moscow University and he is now studying as a journalist Kostya Alak and he has uh, some good uh, background of Moscow State University and he's continuing his education so we're responsible for everything and be please be very careful your ap apology is not counted here Sorry, but I have not been convinced. Can I ask one question? I am attentive to the words. You, saw, you told us that you're a director of an educational program. Do you have the license to do that? It's an educational program in the framework of an exhibition organization. We are not an educational establishment per se. An educational program uh, is when you read lectures to other people. I'm not reading lectures to anyone. I'm only doing that if I'm invited to an organization. We are not a university. We are not an educational establishment. And an educational program in the framework of a large exhibition organization is something completely different from a regular lecture. My question, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, your statement that you uh, taught to students who, lear who knew two or three languages or more, is it an approach of a snob? Is it too pretentious? And those people who uh, do not learn language, who do not know languages, can they study? at your university? No, it was just statistic. It was a statistic to show that people who, who study art critics, criticism, they know languages, they travel actively, they want different things. We were just demonstrating you the stratum. Uh, and it's in our possibilities to guide them to do something else. They can open their journalist school or something else. That's what I wanted to explain. Thank you. Please, any other questions? We wanted to know who the people that you teach to are by backgrounds. Of course, we have to pay tribute to the fact that you are trying to ignite interest in people. It's good that people can communicate uh, they can be involved in this conversation to learn something new and it can become a background for their further development. I think that our audience was a little bit negative towards what you're saying because these are people of uh, older ways. We are people of the newer ways and I'm grateful to what you do, for what you do. And I would like to get an answer to my question. Thank you very much. Out of those uh, 13 people one person was actually is he's okay now he has uh, a, an art background he is now writing his um, thesis uh, at uh, in uh, art history art history department other people who came to us in 2010 were from historical departments from journalism departments they were from art history departments. We had people from uh, a, an, uh, a department of arts. There was one person who was studying history of cinema in the cinema university, and also there were journalists. It's strange. We are being uh, attacked 
Uh, it's like we told you that we are an educational establishment, we've got a license and we're trying to convince you so, with something, but it's not like that. The initiative uh, came from me when I was uh, studying at a university. There were only two courses that helped me how to write such works or articles. When you study in uh, uh, in a uh, history of art department, and I was studying there, on the third year, Mr. Linov, a wonderful man, a wonderful art historian, when meeting with our year, with our course, he asked us, dear students, what do you do? And uh, everybody sat dazzled, they couldn't speak. And then this person continued, you as students, you as art historians, art critics. Actually, it's a funny thing, because in your diploma, you have two professions, the art historian and an art critic, and you have to decide who you are yourself. So this person asked us, what do you produce? And apart from me and another person who was uh, um, trying to say something uh, quite humbly, we said, we produce texts. Actually, it was uh, presupposed that uh, all art historians and art critics have to know how to write. I don't know whether uh, this tradition has changed or not, but this person, this professor, he usually starts his lecture by reading you out all the cliches of existing um, publications or articles, and he tells you what is a text. And that happens usually already during the third year of your education, not the first year. Before that, there are only some uh, complementary uh, classes, not the main course, and it doesn't cover the whole bulk of knowledge that you have to uh, take. My only question is, were your training courses free of charge? Well, the first part, this secrets and experience, this meeting with 14 experts, it was free. Your initiative can, the initiatives are always punished. And now I'd like to give the floor to the, uh, to Jennifer Francis, because she has, she had a question. I just wanted to say, um, in really authenticating your, your initiative. But pardon, I cannot hear you very well, sorry. I'm basically authenticating your initiative. In the UK, um, many arts establishments have outreach programs. They do. They really are about looking at, looking towards and looking for tomorrow's audience. There are workshops, talks, salons, forums, training courses, um, and it's all about accessibility. So I'm just saying that what you're doing finds resonance with me, and it's certainly a practice that happens across the UK. And um, I hear a lot of questions, and I think we've got railroaded a little bit, I think. Um, but it's normal practice, and it just sounds like you're doing good work. Uh, I will pass the question to you in translation. I had some difficulties hearing. But you will have another opportunity to talk to Jennifer. Irina Karpova. Irina Karpova, Voronezh. You know, your presentation caused so much debate and uh, discord and even offenses. And it is probably because the message in your presentation was not quite correct. What you are doing is great. And if young people don't go there, in 10 to 15 years, I think the paintings that you paint won't be seen. It's not related to St. Petersburg and Moscow, but if you come to the town of Voronezh, and if you open a modern arts exhibition, on the one hand, it will cause a lot of interest. On the other hand, people will not understand what they are seeing people need to be educated. So I wouldn't call your program an education program. No, it's kind of enlightenment program. So good luck and try to make your presentation clearer. Then it won't call, cause such debate. Anastasia, I will give the floor to one more person. 
thoughts and after which we'll finish this session. I would like to pass the floor. We heard to the opinion of St. Petersburg, London, Voronezh. We haven't had a word from a Moscovite. Arseny Krukov, Moscow. Uh, I apologize. I have troubles with my receiver. Thank you. My name is Arseny Krukov. I'm a colleague of yours. I also graduated from the art, arts history department. And I would like to express support to your program. I think that you were misheard in the sense that this was an experiment. It looked like an experiment. And I wanted to say that the problem of bringing up a critic is very acute and especially with the young generation. And I experienced that, and I think you experienced that when you graduated. And actually, I wanted to say that it would be nice if you would continue doing that. I think you have excellent opportunity jointly to Mark Bardelik if he helps your development. I think that all of your program, although it's an experiment, is the right thing to do. And you provide opportunities for young art critics and those who come to you, despite the fact that there may be some contradictions and some people disagree with that, but you're doing it, and it's great. Thank you. <coughs> May I say, I'm a practicing art critic. I teach at two universities, University of Culture and University of Cinema. I read history of art. I think that the girls are real smart girls. They are unusual girls because there are art critics in my fifth year who cannot talk, who cannot organize exhibitions, cannot analyze. And that your program is just great. And it, you can call it an education program because you form a stable interest to modern arm, art. And actually, I make a proposal to do. I have students who are artists and restorers. And we can unite our efforts and show how wonderful it is, not only to St. Petersburg and Moscow, but to the whole world. And you being not academic, is explained by your young age and your desire to do things well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I answer, ask one last question? The last but one. I have a question. You said that you did not limit your students in any way. And the colleague spoke about the basis that the students get during the training. How does that correspond to the nature of exhibitions at the garage? Whenever I come to garage or whenever I visit your website, we meet the same Anthony Gorbley, David Hurst, Marina Abramovich, the same media names. You don't represent modern Moscow artists who are less popular but create good art. In St. Petersburg, that happens quite often, and Garage is perhaps the only exhibition space in Moscow which mm, chooses a talent rather than, rather than uh, content. Thank you very much for the question. First, while training, the guys did not only want to did not only go to garage exhibition they went to Tretyakov gallery to pushkin museum and the center of modern art garage starting from 2009 started working with russian young artists and yulia aksionova who is in st petersburg right now is having her wonderful exhibition in gorky park and I believe the seven to nine objects that were specially commissioned from young artists. 
and apart from Zanna Kadyrova from Kiev, all others are from Moscow, or at any rate from Russia. We had a very good phantom monuments exhibitions. You should be more attentive to the site, or perhaps our site is lame and lags behind the events. So uh, we just had an exhibition in New York, 33 moments from a history of Russian performance, which was enjoyed great popularity. It got a lot of very good reviews. It was done by uh, Tarasova and Aksionova in partnership with Andrei Kovalov. Alexandra Obuchova read a lecture, and Andrei Kuskin made the performance. Apart from that, we have w William Kenteridge. His exhibition is on. He's less known than uh, Marina Abramovich, although he deserves just as much attention. Yes, we say we're a young institution. We are developing. We try different exhibition strategies and education strategies. We accept any criticism. We are open to collaboration with curators. Melina Miglitska and Mikhail Bastor came to us with a fabulous collection of, of photos from the 80s. We had an alternative fashion uh, exhibition last year which described the 80s so clearly that one wanted to go back to the 80s. So please come. We have all sorts of exhibitions, and we do not limit our education programs. Part of the lectures are read by Diakonov and Kulik. The lecture on 20th century sculpture. Ira Kulik is uh, reading a cycle of lectures, 23 revolutionaries of the 20th century. We even sacrifice our own time and interest. Well, before a coffee break, one last opinion, very brief. Alexander Filipenko, St. Petersburg Alman Almanac Publishing House. You know, I'm not attacking you. I feel sorry for you, because from my point of view, you do horrid things without understanding it. Thank you. We'll take that to account that we are risking. So I don't know what this person will say, So, but I don't want to. I won't speak about sad things, because I'm a student of history of art, and I'm in the third year. And every year, art expertise is vanishing. We get a great basis, but we don't know how to write those texts. And what you are doing, even from the standpoint of how people criticize you is something that is very needed. It's a great example of what everyone should do. Such courses should be set up at the universities. And uh, the old schoolers, if the old schoolers don't know how you do it, let them organize it, because you will never see good critics unless we are taught by good teachers. You give us knowledge in arts, but you don't give us practice that is needed. And then you scold us for being bad, for writing crap in the magazines. So who solved this problem? Thank you. Nadezhda Prigova. Nesta and Marta, thanks a lot. On behalf of the older generation, I would say old, but I say older, I can say that I've never seen a better initiative. I think that this is a great enlightenment work. Garage a, is a unique education, and you are gems in that education, of that education. Thank you. Well, we'll come back to this problem in our next session in 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, after the coffee break. The coffee break will be downstairs. We will discuss the problem of artistic education.